John Gideon Okolo was an East African revolutionary and the leader of the Zanzibar Revolution in 1964. This revolution overthrew Sultan Jamshid bin Abdullah and led to the proclamation of Zanzibar as a republic. Biography Youth Little is known of Okolo's youth. He was born in Lango District, in what was the Uganda Protectorate, and was baptized at age two, receiving the baptismal name of Gideon. He was orphaned at age 11 and grew up with other relatives. When he was 15, he left and set out on his own and found work in several places within East Africa. At various times, Okolo was a clerk, manservant, gardener, and did odd jobs. He later went through training to become a bricklayer. He was arrested in Nairobi, for unclear reasons and was incarcerated for two years, during which time he became interested in revolutionary ideas. There is some speculation that, at some point, Okolo had a residence in Cuba and was indoctrinated in communism by Fidel Castro. Police officer on Pemba in 1959 Okolo left for the island of Pemba, where he tried to find work on one of the farms but became a police officer instead. Okolo joined the Afro-Shirazi party of Sheikh Abiyad Karama. This party opposed the dominant position of the minority Arabs on the islands of Zanzibar and Pemba. Revolutionary Okolo left for Zanzibar in 1963, where he contacted the leaders of the Afro-Shirazi Youth League, the youth organization of the Afro-Shirazi party. The Youth League strove for a revolution in order to break the power of the Arabs. On Zanzibar, Okolo was also a member of the Painters' Union, being a house painter. In his free time, he built up a small army of determined African nationalists. This army was required to hold themselves to the strict rules of Okolo. Sexual abstinence, no raw meat, and no alcohol. The highly religious Okolo was convinced he had been given orders in his dreams by God to break the powerful position of the Arabs and to found a revolutionary state on Zanzibar and Pemba. Okolo also said that he received orders from God, when still in Uganda, by how he observed the position of stones in a stream. On the night before the revolution, rumor has it that Okolo gave his men the order to kill all Arabs between 18 and 25 years of age, to spare pregnant and elderly women, and not to rape virgins. Uprising and genocide on January 12, 1964, with popular support from the island's native African majority, Okolo and his men fought their way to the capital of Zanzibar, Stone Town, where the Sultan lived. Even though they were poorly armed, Okolo and his men surprised the police force of Zanzibar and they took power. During a speech on radio, Okolo dubbed himself the Field Marshal of Zanzibar and Pemba. He gave the Sultan in order to kill his family and to kill himself afterwards, otherwise, Okolo would do so himself. However, the Sultan had already brought himself to safety and later would later escape to Britain. The Prime Minister and other ministers did not escape and were imprisoned for many years. The coup led to the little-known bloodbath of between 5,000 and 20,000 ethnic Arabs, whose families had been living in Zanzibar for centuries, between January 18 and 20. Footage of the massacre can be seen in Gualtiero Iacopetti's film Africa Radio, a 1966 exemplar of the Mondo film genre. Shoved to the side Okolo created a revolutionary council and was named the leader of the Afro-Shirazi party. Abiyad Karama was appointed president and the leader of the Umar Massa party, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Mohammed Babu Prime Minister. Neither Karaman nor Babu had not been informed of the coup. Both resided in Tanganyika, but returned to Zanzibar, where they were welcomed by Okolo. However, neither Karaman nor Babu wanted anything to do with him. Afterward, Okolo appeared to be too unstable to play any role in government of the new country and was quietly sidelined from the political scene by Karama, who allowed him to retain his title of field marshal. By 3 February Zanzibar was finally returning to normality and Karama had been accepted, almost unquestioningly, as its president. Okolo formed a paramilitary unit, known as the Freedom Military Force. 
from his own supporters which is known to have patrolled the streets and become involved with looting. In addition to Okolo's violent rhetoric, his thick and dialectic English pronunciations and Arkoli tribal English accent typical of Arkoli from northern Uganda, and his Christian beliefs, alienated many in the largely moderate Zanzibari and Muslim ASP. By March many of his FMF had been disarmed by Karim's supporters and an Umar party militia. Okolo was denied access to the country when he tried to return from a trip to the mainland and was deported to Tanganyika and end of Kenya before returning destitute to his native Uganda. He was officially removed from his post as field marshal on the 11th of March. The People's Liberation Army was formed by the government in April and completed the disarmament of Okolo's remaining FMF troops. On 26 April Karama announced that he had negotiated to enter into a union with Tanganyika to form the new country of Tanzania. Karam's reason for doing so may have been to prevent the radicals in the Umar party from taking over the country or to reduce the possibility of increasing communist influence in East Africa. Despite this, many of the Umar party's socialist policies on health, education and social welfare were adopted by the government. Speculations concerning his death Okolo then stayed in Kenya, in Congo Kinshasa and in Uganda. He was incarcerated multiple times and was last seen with the Ugandan president Idi Amin in 1971. He vanished afterwards. In the book Revolution on Zanzibar by Don Peterson, it is more or less assumed that Idi Amin saw him as a threat and arranged his murder. This remains speculation, however.